What's up, everybody? And Victoria here from the Disc Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be discussing um, Toy Story Land and all the kind of the news that's been going on. There's been some images coming around of the development, and basically, it's coming together quite nicely. People are thinking, oh, it'll be open next summer. I'm um, looking at the pictures myself and thinking it looks quite a way away from that yet. But we know Disney can work quite fast. Um, so, do you want to give us an update on kind of what else you've been hearing about this park? Ah, uh, well. Twitter user BioReconstruct has been giving us a lot of overhead photos from the sky of it. I have seen a few of myself of the progress that's going on, but the, his pictures are a lot better than, you know, what I've seen. Um, it's basically already showing the um, Slinky Dog coaster basically mm-hmm. is really close to being finished. Like, I can yeah. see it being finished just about summertime, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, saucers I see as well the um, alien saucers as well just starting to get done but then it's to me it's always the thing of not necessarily I mean some of those um, attractions very much look like carnival kind of off the shelf just purchased and then they slap a different ch- color um, sort of theme over the top of it because there's not really anything amazingly new there to be done like black for example like a Pandora so it's a lot of it's going to be working on the theming and getting sure well, that's correct and um I mean, we don't really even know really how big this Toy Story Land is going to be. I mean, if we've not really heard too much about it. Um, I mean, based on what I've seen driving past it, like driving past it and like being in close proximity of it during my visits to studios, it's gonna be. It's not gonna be big, but it's gonna it's gonna be impressive. I'll mm. say that. I mean, I I think because for me, I just always go back to the, like this Toy Story area of Disneyland Paris, which is very like you know very very basic. You know, the Slinky the Slinky Dog attraction in Paris is literally like something not far off what we've got on the pier down here in my town, um, where it's just going around. So it doesn't look too much too different. Um, the one in Paris, there is not really a lot of theming. There's just a Buzz Lightyear at the beginning, and so if they go kind of in some ways a little bit cheap on that side um it could be done quite quickly um you know we don't know how much it this does not feel like it's the same kind of in immersiveness as pandora or star wars land yeah uh, i mean i feel like it's too soon to tell i i mean it is supposed to open sometime next year though so mm-hmm. honestly for some reason i got the land time switched up for some reason so i'm thinking star wars was going to be next year which mm looking at the pictures wouldn't make any sense, but I mean, Disneyland Paris' version, it, it did seem kind of slapped together, to be quite honest. I, I, did, I didn't even bother getting on it. It just seemed yeah. a yeah. little... It just seemed like a normal carnival coaster, like you said. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's this kind of thing as well. I think... It's, I mean, the only other thing with what... Because Toy Story Land has been used in other theme parks, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Paris, you know, they might have already got a lot of the, the, the development work done, a lot of the work, the groundwork, a lot of the design and the rides pretty much ready to roll. And it is just a lower, because it's aimed at lower end you know, attractions, it's a lot easier just to sort of put this together. And theming might be a lot easier. And it's, I don't know, it's just, I always felt like, had this n- not been announced around the same time as Star Wars Land and Pandora, people are going to be looking towards this maybe in one way more than it actually will be and another hand no this is not a fully immersive area uh, i mean i'm not entirely sure but just because it's only two attractions and i mean obviously i feel it's going to be connected to pixar place but at the same time i i feel like they're going to announce more of how it's going to be immersive towards you know closer to its opening i i don't I don't know. I mean, it's more so for families. Yeah, you know. unless they literally, unless they haven't maybe gone down the other line that maybe they are, that's only stage one, and that'll open next year, and then there'll be another area behind which they'll add on later. Um, but I think I think hopefully as well, just having that open, if they can get it out, you know, Halloween or Christmas next year, because not necessarily mean it's going to be like January the first, two thousand eighteen. Um, it also would help Hollywood studios because there's still that kind of big feeling of there's not a lot there. Yeah, I mean, Hollywood studios just has not grasped its identity yet. I mean, a, I mean, a few years back, 
I just said it was going to get a whole new name. Mm. We never got the name. We still don't have the name. The sorcerer has gone. Such a construction. I mean, it's it's just, it's mainly Star Wars right now, yeah. to be quite honest. Yeah. I mean, unless they literally, they haven't quite told us all yet, but when they actually switch the button to that, you know, Star Wars land is open, all these attractions would just flip and they, you know, suddenly <laughs> <laughs> they've been planning it all along that the whole park is just going to be Star Wars. But no, it does look pretty interesting that roller coaster. I'm hoping it's a little bit more than the Barnstormer. I'm kind of would like something in, you know, I always like these roller coasters are great, but there's that line between them being, you know, big fun the mountain, which is fun for the family, and then the Barnstormer, which is just fun for kids. Yeah, I mean, a lot of users on Twitter have been saying, based off the concept art and based off the photos that they've seen, it looks like a more intense Barnstormer. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like that would be interesting for kids. Mm, so. Yeah. Definitely kind of, yeah, it's, it doesn't, it's never really sort of stood out to me as being, you know, a major attraction. It is just um, additional um, stuff for kids to do. And I don't think that's a bad thing for that park because I think that park needs a little bit more kids love. And also, Pixar Toy Story needs, a, should have a lot more of a presence in the parks than they're pulling up till now. I mean, honestly, in a way, Toy Story Land kind of reminds me of like the console art reminds me of the Simpsons area in Universal. It's just like yeah. a lot of colors and carnival colors and like more kid friendly. I would yeah, say. No. <laughs> definitely looks fun. Be, hopefully, we'll find a little bit more. Maybe at the D twenty three Expo, we'll find out kind of because I imagine that would be one that they're going to sort of be um, tooting a little bit about because it's something that's probably a lot more closer and they've not really revealed too much about it. Yeah, well, I'll definitely be at that panel. <laughs> and on that note, guys, be sure to let us know what you guys think of the um, so far what we've seen of Toy Story Land. Be sure to check us out over at thiskingdom.com and on all the different social medias. And Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter, and he calls me PP. And Instagram, he calls me Pineapple Crypto. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. Later. Bye.